What was wrong with the M&Ms on the set of Stranger Things? Are the Duffer Brothers just terrible at physics? And why didn't they pay attention to Eleven's nose? And funniest of all, how did Mike's legs get so hairy all of a sudden? Hi, I'm Peter, and you're watching Osa Movies. Let's talk about some of the most subtle mistakes on Stranger Things, but beware, if you think you know everything about the mistakes made on Stranger Things, well, you're already kind of wrong. Also, this video is going to be super nerdy. Walkie talkies. In nearly every episode from season one, the kids use walkie talkies, which means they use them a lot. A cool way to get around the frustrations of not having modern mobile phones, as well as a period accurate detail from the 1980s, right? Well, not exactly. Back in the 80s, walkie talkies were indeed common things for kids to play with, except they were way simpler and cheaper than the ones used on the show. The model you see in the series is a TRC-214, and back in those days, those particular devices were pretty expensive. So you can be sure that there's no way the parents of the kids on the show would ever have bought them such professional walkie-talkies. Well, maybe they were cheaper toys then, made to look expensive. Sure, why not? But definitely not the TRC-214. But if they were cheap plastic walkie-talkies, they'd still have a very limited range, probably around 15 or 20 feet. They certainly wouldn't be able to stretch to the next street, let alone reach the upside down. Just imagine how boring the show would have been with realistic kids walkie-talkies, huh? M&Ms. In season three, episode five, there's a scene where the Stranger Things kids are all together at the hospital. Mike talks to Eleven and shares some M&Ms with her. And here's where our next nerdy mistake is hidden. If you pay close attention to the color of one particular candy, you'll notice that there's a red M&M. So, who cares, you may ask? Well, the point is that there was a period of time when red M&Ms didn't exist, because that specific food dye was considered to be allergenic. Those little red candies were banned for 11 years, from 1976 until 1987. And as true Stranger Things fans should know, the events of the show take place in 1985. So there's no chance that red M&Ms would have existed in the world of the show. That is, unless the hospital had kept those candies since 1976, which would have had some horrible consequences for the poor kids who ate them, right? Hmm. Maybe that's the reason Elle lost her superpowers. Eating expired candy? Who knows? Planck's constant. Okay, this one is insanely nerdy. Of course, all of you remember the scene where Dustin contacts his summer camp girlfriend Susie, and the scene where they duet the theme song from the movie The Neverending Story. But what exactly did he call her for? Dustin asks Susie to name the exact value of Planck's constant to help Hopper to open the locked door in the Russian secret laboratory. And so Susie does, after hearing the song, of course. So she calls out this number, 6.626070004 which is indeed Planck's constant, but this particular value was only accepted as recently as 2014, back in 1985, and what I learned in school for that matter was that Planck's number was actually 6.62676. Oops, that's a pretty nerdy inconsistency to notice, because take it from me, physics is hard, folks. After all, the constant has even been updated again in 2018 since the show aired. At the moment, I mean, as we all know, Planck's constant is actually expressed as 6.62607015 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Obviously. And obviously, this was something that the Duffer brothers couldn't have known at the time of writing. But uh, I think we can all forgive them for that. The poster nosebleed. This is one of my favorites. And it isn't about the series itself, but instead about the poster for Stranger Things season three. Just look at how well made it is. The Stranger Things gangs are all getting ready to kick the upside down monster's ass. Everybody's present on the poster. Mike, Will, Dustin, Hopper, even the Mind Flayer. And Eleven, of course. Now, take a look at Eleven's nose. Closer, closer, a little closer. Enhance, enhance. Okay, that's it, enough. As you can see, that blood is coming from her right nostril. And if you take a look at any scene from Stranger Things where Eleven uses her superpowers and you pay extra attention to her nose, you'll see that the blood always, always, always comes out of her left nostril. Okay, in some scenes, 
with the most intense use of her powers, both nostrils might bleed, but it never comes from the right one alone. Pfft, oops again. And as a true Eleven fan, I should say that this lack of attention to detail is unacceptable. Dear Duffer Brothers, please pay attention to Elle's nosebleed next time, okay? Don't disappoint the fans. Thanks. Hairy legs. And finally, here's a funny mistake from the third season that's almost impossible to spot. I'm talking about the scene where the gang fights the feral Billy. Billy goes a little too hard on the poor kids here. He smashes Max, punches Mike, and goes to hit the hell out of everybody. If only Elle didn't step in at the last second and stop him. But let's roll back a bit to the moment where Billy pushes Mike into the wall. As all of you out there have no doubt noticed, Mike likes to wear shorts, but we're not gonna pay extra attention to the shorts themselves, but more the legs. Because, well, obviously, as you can see in this stop shot, those aren't Mike's legs. It's definitely his stunt double, whose legs are much hairier, which is fine. There's no need to push the poor kid into the wall, but come on, can you guys, I don't know, shave his legs? Or retouch these few shots? It's as simple as that. Or perhaps over at Osa Movies, we should stop being quite so picky. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, folks. Subscribe to our channel, and as always, stay awesome.